Hello everybody, it's Thomas, I'm back, I'm in the garden. You can see the projector screen here and the hot tub here. Um, about five years ago now, Tom Scott did a video. This video was about APIs. And I thought what better way to bring back a conversation about APIs than doing what he did to show you the current view count in the title. So as you can see down there, it's showing you the current view count. That's not going to be 100% correct. Don't refresh the page and expect it to be right. I'm only polling about every 20 minutes or so. And then YouTube doesn't update their view count in real time anyway. So, but what is an API? An API stands for Application Programming Interface. And really is what I've got here. So I've got my prompter on my camera using this other device it's sending an API request to that device to allow the prompter to scroll on but essentially an API is a way like a standardized way for device A to talk to device B a bit like English so when you go to a restaurant you have the waiter the kitchen and the table where you are you talk to the waiter about what you would like. The waiter goes and tells the kitchen, the kitchen make it, they bring it back to you via the waiter. The waiter in this case is the API. Um, recently with the age of AI, they are really using APIs. Now when you go on to say ChatGPT or whatever, you can get it to look up stuff from Google or from other websites that's all using APIs so let me show you the code on how I've done this API so hopefully here on the screen you can see the code okay so I've pulled up the code on my computer computer and as you can see there's some standard boilerplate along the top um, where it's including something called the API key server this is just something I have so API keys, APIs are not open these days. There was a time when anybody, and some services do allow this, anybody to make a request and they will return the data you want. However, Google requires me, if I want to make a request about my video, especially to update and modify content, they, have, they want to know it's me or somebody I trust with the keys. So they use something called API keys or access tokens. These often expire. In this case, it expires after an hour. So we have to refresh the key using a refresh token. A refresh token is a persistent token that they give you that you only use once an hour. You don't use it in every request, you use it once an hour. That can be invalidated if required, but makes it a bit more secure than using the access token to re-authenticate yourself every hour. So as you can see up here, you've got the client ID, the secret and the token. Those verify who I am, we will be using them later on. And then you've got the video ID. This is the video I'm updating. It's very simple. You know, you know up there in the URL where you have the little bit of the video? That's this, that's this ID. So this bit of code here is, the, is refreshing the access token. Recalling this every time the piece of code runs. This takes my refresh token and gives me a valid access token that I can use right now to make the request to get the content about the video and update the video. Down here we then have a function to update the title. Essentially all this does is get the current status from YouTube about the video statistics, whether that be view count, like count, whatever, whatever, or other data, the images, the thumbnail, all that sort of stuff. Downloads that to the computer using the API. Then it allows it to parse that data. If the video isn't found, we, have, we throw an error. Then we generate a new title that says this video has view count here, views. So down there should hopefully be correct. Then we send an update. So we put some data on the system where we update the title by saying that we want to update the title for this category. That then uses my access token to send it back to the server to make sure I am me and that I have the right to do this on the server. The title gets updated and that's it. And then just down here, we put that all together 
we call the access token. With the client ID and the client secret and the refresh token, get back the access token, update the video title, return the response. If it went wrong, it went wrong. It logs it, I'll have a look at it later. This is not vitally important stuff. However, if there was an issue and it failed, it'll return a different key. I could write code to interpret that, handle it, maybe throw an error that I need to be alerted immediately, or tell somebody that something's gone wrong. But that's kind of how this is working. I hope you found this video interesting. I hope you've learned something about APR keys, and I'll see you in the next one.